Hi, my name is Mark Rodriguez. I am the pastor of Love Unlimited, and I want to welcome you to our online church experience. We've prepared a great service for you. We have a song at the end that is going to draw you closer to God, and today's message is titled, God Wants to Bless You. We've been in a series now for the last couple of weeks called Known, Forgotten by Some, but Known by God. I want you to know that God knows exactly who you are, and He loves you just the way that you are. And in this series, we've been looking at different characters in the Bible out of Hebrews chapter 11, and we've learned how God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things, to accomplish incredible things in His name. Just this week, I actually had the privilege of praying for a graduating class here in our town. And when I started uh, my time with them, I said, you know what? I know that we are not meeting under ordinary circumstances, but the reason why is because you are extraordinary students and God has incredible plans for you. And I believe that that is not just the case for this graduating class. And if you're graduating this year from high school, you're graduating from college or wherever you're graduating from, I want you to know from the bottom of my heart, congratulations. God has great things in store for you. The Bible teaches us that every person is designed for excellence. I've never been too impressed with being called average. Somebody said once that average means you're just as close to the bottom as you are to the top. That sounds kind of mediocre to me. How would you like to live a life that's above average? See, we're going to look at today that God never meant for us to just live average lives. People say that you're one in a million, and you know what? You're not. You're one in four and a half billion. You are unique. There is nobody else in the world like you. If you're not you, nobody else is going to be you. You're not average because you are unique. You are different. Everybody needs to live above average. Today, we're going to look at a man who literally stood out in a crowd. His name was Jabez. He's one of my favorite characters in the Bible. He's an interesting guy. And the first nine chapters of the book of 1 Chronicles, it's all genealogies. I don't know about you, but when I was younger and I would read the Bible, I would skip all those names. See, there's over 600 names that are mentioned in the beginning of 1 Chronicles. And we're not going to read them all today. But right in the middle of those 600 names, God singles out one man for special recognition. It catches his attention. Out of 600 generations of the people of God, this man deserves special recognition. He has an honorable mention. God singles him out right in the middle of all these names. And his name was Jabez. He's kind of what a redwood tree would be like in the middle of a forest of bonsai. You can't miss him. He's there. There's only two verses in the entire Bible about this man, but he gets two verses, whereas 600 other people don't get anything said about them. And the question today is why? What made Jabez stand out? What made him so special? What made him above average? What made him unusual that God would single him out? See, when God singles out someone, you know that he must have done something significant to be singled out by God. What did Jabez do that caused him to be preserved for posterity. And here, over 4,000 years later, in the middle of a global pandemic, we're talking about a man who lived 4,000 years ago in the Middle East. What was unique about his life? See, there's just this thumbnail sketch about him. These two verses. But in these two verses, we learn these three secrets that when applied to your life, I guarantee will cause you to live a life that is above average. First Chronicles 4.9 says this, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez saying, because I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel saying, oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory and let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I would be free from pain. And God granted him his request. That's all there is in the Bible about Jabez. Two verses. He prayed a prayer, but the prayer gives us a lot of insight about his life. 
How do we live lives above average? The three things that we learn from Jabez prayer will tell us, will teach us how to live a life that is blessed by God and above average. And the first point that I want you to know is you need to have a great ambition. While Jabez's friends were satisfied with being average, Jabez said, Lord, I want you to do something significant in my life. I want you to bless me. I want you to enlarge my territory. He's saying he didn't want to be ordinary. He wanted to expand. He wanted to grow. He wanted to enlarge his territory, expand his vision, deepen my dreams. Give me a goal. Make me something above ordinary, out of the ordinary, unusual. He wanted something special and great. He wanted to go for the gusto in life. Most of all, he wanted God's blessing more deeply in his life. Let me tell you something. If you want to be used by God, if you want to be blessed, if you want your family and your children and your children's children to be a people that is protected by God, that people will look at you and look at your descendants and say, I want to be like them. We need to cry out to God and say, God, expand my territory. God, bless my people. God, use me for your glory. See, many people go through life just drifting. They have no goals. They have no purpose. They have no aim, no desires. They just float with the crowd. And Jabez said, God, I don't want to be that way. I want us to say that today. God, I do not want to be that way. I want you to enlarge my territory. I want you to stretch me. God, I want you to do something you've never done before in my life. You've got to have a dream. You stop dreaming, you start dying. No goals, there's no growth. You've got to have vision. As long as your horizon is expanding, you are a healthy human being. As long as your horizon is expanding, you're facing new challenges, trying new dreams, believing God for greater things, growing and stretching and facing new challenges. See, there are three common misconceptions that prevent us from having great ambition in life. The first one is we tend to confuse humility with fear. We say, I could never do that. I could never do anything. I'm just this little weak person. That's not being humble. That's being scared. That's being fearful. It's a lack of faith. Humility says this, I can do it with God's help. With God's blessing, I can do it. We need to change the way that we speak. Maybe when you look at the circumstance that you're in, you're like, this is impossible for me. But with God, all things are possible. See, a lot of people wonder, if I get a big dream, I may get full of pride. And that's a, a legitimate worry. The Bible says that God judges pride harsher than almost any other sin. He judges it very quickly. But you don't have to worry about God humbling you. Is it hard for God to humble you? I've learned from experience. It's no problem at all for God to humble me. Just about the time I think, Mark, you've got it together. You're all right. I make the stupidest mistakes and I fall flat on my face. And I'm like, oh Lord, help me. See, God has a way of shaking the carpet a little bit. And the, and the question is why? Just because God has given you a dream doesn't mean that you're immune from making mistakes. It is no problem at all for God to humble you. See, when you get a dream, you get critics. You've got to have great ambition, but don't confuse humility with fear. The second thing is we tend to confuse contentment with laziness. Paul says in Philippians 4.12, I have learned to be content in every situation. Some people think that that means that you don't set any goals. You don't have any dreams. You're, you're just content with what you have. No, Paul is not saying that he doesn't have any goals. He's not saying that he doesn't strive to improve himself or to be better, or he has no desire for tomorrow. He's saying that he has learned to be fully content and fully satisfied and enjoy today while he is working on tomorrow's goals. He's saying, I have learned to enjoy the present. He is not worried that he can't be happy until he gets that new house. He's learned to be content today and enjoy today while he is working 
towards the goals that he will reach one day. And don't confuse contentment with laziness. See, we also tend to confuse little thinking with spirituality. Some people use God as an excuse. I'm, I'm just here to serve the Lord in my little way. Sometimes I think God wants to throw up when he hears us speak that way. He's thinking, stop serving me in your little way. How about something in a bigger way? How about I'm just going to do what God made me to do? How about people that use this excuse, I'm just the way that the Lord made me, or you don't know my story, or you don't know where I come from. I want to say, don't blame God. We make ourselves by a lot of our own choices. Satan is an expert in getting us to think small. Jabez is an example of the power of thinking big and trusting God. Great men and great women are simply ordinary people with great thoughts and great ideas and great ambitions and great dreams and great faith. See, if you want to be like Jabez, you need to say, Lord, enlarge my territory. Lord, bless me. That is is a legitimate request. God, I want you to do something significant in my life. We need to have great ambition. The second thing, you need a growing faith if you're going to be living above average. It's interesting, in these two verses, we notice a couple things about this man Jabez. In the first place, there's no mention made of any special ability in his life, no talent or gift. It doesn't say he was educated. It doesn't say he was wealthy or had any unusual abilities. He was just a common man with an uncommon faith in God. And God says, it's a growing faith. If you've got faith, you don't have to worry about what you don't have. Evidently, Jabez had some kind of disability. Evidently, Jabez had a handicap of some kind. We're not really sure what it was, but his name in Hebrew means painful. How would you like to carry that name all your life? So evidently, he caused his mother so much grief when he was born that his mother labeled him painful. How would you like to be called that? He was probably unwanted, unloved. Every time his mom looked at him, she thought, that kid is a pain. Rejected. His name was a constant reminder that even his mother regretted his birth. That would be a handicap in life. But Jabez's faith was stronger than his handicap. He would not let somebody else label him. He would not allow anyone to interfere with God's plan for his life. And can I encourage you today not to allow anyone to label you. You are a child of God. You have been chosen by God for greatness. Who has labeled you? And who are you letting get away with labeling you, with keeping you from God's plan for your life. They've labeled you. She's shy. He doesn't talk very well. He's always been the nervous type. She's always had a temper on and on. How have you let other people label you? Maybe when you were a kid, your dad said, you're never going to amount to anything. And you believed it. You're never going to be anything significant. I'm always going to be ashamed of you. Maybe a significant friend in your life, somebody labeled you in your life and it put a limitation on your life that God never intended to be there in the first place. It kept you from having great ambition and growing faith. That is probably what your handicap is today. For some of you, it may be physical, but for many of us, it is words that people have spoken into our lives, labels that we have accepted, and now we are limiting what God can do in our life, what God wants to do in our life. See, for some of you, it may be a spiritual handicap. For some of you, maybe it is an emotional handicap. You think, I've got this hang up and God could never use me. God uses ordinary people. God uses forgotten people. God knows you right where you are. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're feeling. He knows the pain that you have inside and he's ready to heal you. He's ready to give you the life that you've never had. He's ready for this next season of your life to be the best season of your life. Don't let an unhappy childhood 
cripple you from what the Lord wants to do. Sometimes we get scared as a kid and, and it frustrates us. Maybe you're unhappy in your marriage. There's a situation in your life that is killing you and crippling you. God wants to do something great in your life. The third characteristic that we see in Jabez's life that made him stand out among 600 names in the Bible is this, the third one. He had a genuine prayer life. See, you need a genuine prayer life. Jabez was honored by God simply because he prayed. Can I ask you a question? When was the last time that you talked to God? Not that you prayed out loud before a meal or because someone asked you to pray, but that you really had a conversation with God. You know, like those conversations that you want to have with people. You know, like those conversations when you tell one of your loved ones, we haven't talked in a while. And they're like, oh, but we just talked a few minutes ago. Yeah, but we haven't really talked in a while. When was the last time that you prayed? You see, he prayed a secret prayer. But two verses are recorded for posterity. And because of this simple prayer, he achieved greatness. His prayer was the key to his life. And we look at his prayer and we notice that Jabez made three requests. He made three requests that made him live a life above average. If you want your prayers answered, you have to pray these kinds of prayers. You know that these prayers will be answered because God answered them in the Bible. It says that God granted his request. So evidently, there are legitimate requests. If you want to live above average, pray these kinds of prayers for your life. The first thing is Jabez prayed for God's power in his life. He said, bless me. I want your power in my life. He knew that to live a life that was above average, he needed God's power to accomplish his dreams. He couldn't do it on his own. He was very specific. He said, I want you to give me more real estate. That was his goal. He had a very clear and specific goal that he prayed about. God, I want you to expand my real estate holdings. Do you pray that way? Are you that specific when you pray to God? Do you pray about your goals? Are you specific about telling God what you would like for him to do in your life? Do you talk to the Lord about your business? Do you say, God, expand my business? Maybe that's why it hasn't happened. Have you said, God, bless my home, bless my life, help me to be greater and stronger and a more committed person? Are you specific? That's what Jabez was. He said, God, I want you to enlarge my territory. It's very specific. The first time I read this, it seemed like a selfish prayer. All he was saying was, help me, bless me, use me. It seems very selfish, but evidently God approved of this prayer because he answered it. See, ambition is neither good nor bad. It's neither always good. It's neither always bad. Ambition is morally neutral. What makes the difference is the motive behind the ambition. Why do you want what you want? Why do you pray what you pray for? Evidently, Jabez's motives were right. The difference is determined by your motives. Ambition is just A basic drive that God has given us. God never honors an unworthy motive. What do we learn from this? God dares you to ask him for a great request. Ephesians 3.20 says, God is able to do more that you can ever think or imagine. I can imagine some pretty big things. I have a very vivid imagination. My wife makes fun of me sometimes. God kind of gives us a little challenge. He says, you think of the greatest way that I could bless your life and I can top that. He's able to do more than you can ever imagine. Over 20 times in the New Testament, we're commanded by the scriptures to ask God for things over and over. Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open unto you. Whatsoever you pray, believe that you will receive them and you shall have them. If you ask for anything in my name, I will do it. You have not because you ask not. Ask that your joy may be full. Over and over again, the words used to describe prayer in the New Testament are all encompassing words like ask for everything, anything, whatsoever, whensoever, whosoever. They're limitless terms, God says. You get to decide how much I bless your life according to your faith. 
it will be done unto you. You get to decide how much of God do you want in your life? How much of him do you want in your business? How much do you want him to bless your home? You get to decide. God says, according to your faith, it will be done unto you. And God says, pray. And that's what Jabez did. He asked. He prayed for God's power in his life. Jeremiah says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't even know about. You cannot out ask or out dream God. That is one of the things that it is impossible. It stretches our imagination and God can go farther than that. The greatest limitation in your life is your attitude. How much do I want to believe God? And so he prayed for God's power in his life. Jabez prayed for God's presence in his life. In verse 10, it says, I want you to bless me. I want you to enlarge my territory. Let your hand be with me. I want you guys to like memorize this part of the Bible because it is incredible. He said, God, I want you to be with me. I want your presence to be with me in my work. And the question is why? Why is he saying I want you to be with me? Because large territories increases responsibility. It means you have more borders to defend. With growth comes additional pressure. With success comes additional problems. You have problems when you're successful. Just different ones. They're bigger because you have more responsibility. The larger the territory that you have, the more enemies you're going to have, the more envy that you're going to have in your life. The closer you grow to the Lord, the more the devil is going to hassle you and bother you. The third thing is Jabez prayed for God's protection in his life. Lord, let your hand be with me and keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. Pain, what his name reminded him of the pain of rejection. We don't know exactly, but he said, Lord, I want your protection in my life. Keep me from harm. Why? Because the bigger you get, the more critics you're going to have. The more people will be against you. Jabez knew that with God's power and God's presence, God's protection, he didn't need to fear anything. When you can combine the powerful force of God and great ambition and a growing faith and a genuine prayer life, you can be sure that you're going to stand out in a crowd. You will be an extraordinary person. You will live an above average life. And how do you evaluate your life today? What do you say about your life? Would you say I'm above average? I'm average? I'm below average? Would you like to begin living the kind of life that God meant for you to live in spite of what people labeled you, in spite of the nicknames that you may have, the kind of life that God always intended you to have? See, which of these elements are active in your life today? Have you let God give you a great vision? If not, maybe that's the first thing you need to do is say, God, give me a vision God, I pray that you would heal me of the words that people have spoken into my life. The things that have limited me from achieving what you want me to achieve in this life. You know what? I want to pray for you today because I believe that God has incredible things in store for you. And these two months that we have been in quarantine and now things are starting to get back to normal, but they're not really normal. I believe that we can have the best life that we've ever had, that we can live the best days that we have ever lived, that God could do greater things in the rest of our life than we have done in the past. Do you believe that God can do that? Do you want him to do that in your life? Well, I want to lead you in a prayer today. A prayer for some of you that it, it is rededicating your life to God. And for others of you, you're giving your life to God for the first time today. You're surrendering your dreams. You're surrendering your future to God. And those of you that have gone astray, hey, there's no better day to come back than today. And so let's pray this prayer together. Let's pray it out loud. Let's mean it from the bottom of our heart. If you're in a home with a few people, I know some of our Love Unlimited family have invited people over to their house today, and I am so proud of you for doing that. Others of you didn't feel comfortable, and that's okay. We love you too, and I want you to pray this prayer with me. Close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Dear God, I come to you today, and I say I'm sorry for the mistakes that I've made for the sins that I've committed. 
I give you my life. I give you everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, have you prayed that prayer today? Let me tell you, you made the best decision of your life. And I want to help you in this new journey that you are now on. And here's what you got to do. I want to send you some resources. I want you to text the word AMEN to 786-541-1020. Text the word AMEN to 786-541-1020. And I'll send you some resources that are going to help you in this new journey that you are on. Hey, maybe you've been watching today's message or you call Love Unlimited home and God has blessed you and you want to support our ministry. You want to set up recurring giving. You want to make a special donation today. It's real easy. All you need to do is go to loveunlimited.com forward slash give just like it's right here on the screen and you can make your donation right there. Maybe you want to give towards our outreach ministry. You can select outreach and give towards our outreach ministry. If you follow us on social media, you'll see that we've been doing incredible things in Miami and we've been helping families. We've been sending food to people and we are preparing to relaunch the church greater than ever. And we can't do it without your financial support. Maybe you rather give using Cash App. That's real easy too. All you need to do is use the dollar sign and write out Love Unlimited the same way that it's here on the screen. And now I'd like to invite you to worship with us. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. And your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of even Lazarus. And your voice is calling me out cause right now and I know you're able and my God come through again and you can do all things and you can do all things but lost the battle, no, you never lost the battle, and I know, I know that you never will, everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost, a new wind is blowing right now, and breaking my heart of stone, Taking over like it's Jericho And my walls are all crashing down Cause right now And I know you're able My God Come through again Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that song. I loved it. God spoke to me as I worshiped. I want you to know that we love you and we are here for you. And we want you to follow us on social media. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. This is the best way for us to stay 
connected. And all you need to do is just search for Love Unlimited, L-O-V-E-U-N-L-T-D. Search for us, you'll find us, and you can know everything that's happening in our church. Now I'm going to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, write a comment below, and share the video with some friends. We hear stories every single week of God transforming lives because someone shared a video with them. We'll see you next time.